Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV, special digital edition. I have actress and dancer and author, Robia Scott, with me. And her book is called Counterfeit Comforts. Um, and we'll talk about that, but we're going to have a little bit of fun, because if any of you guys are Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans, you might recognize her. So, um, well, you started out really early. Born in Queens, is that right? Yes, born in Queens. In New York. And started, I started out really early. I was born. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You started out in showbiz really early, I, I should did, say. I did, so I did. You were dancing. Oh, well, I saw the movie Flashdance, and that was it. Got a big old perm the next day. I'm not kidding. I got a big perm <laughs> the next day. Uh, 12, 13 well, 12, years 13, old, 13, okay. yes, and started um, going to dance classes every day after school. Mm. Got really serious about it. Became professional. And ended up? And ended up with Prince. Yeah, so... A number of years later. Maybe you know this, but if there's like some website about the girls of Prince, and you're listed. So. I am, yes, I am one of the girls of Prince. I was a muse. <laughs> I was a muse. Is that, is that yeah. what they call them? Mm -hmm. How was that? Was that? It was, it, well, it was supposed to just be one music video that I was doing with him for the Diamonds and Pearls album. Uh -huh. And he was looking for identical twins. He could not find any twins. And there happened to be another dancer auditioning, and we looked alike. So he made us the twins. You're the twins. Uh, yes, so we were the twins. And then when we started rehearsing, there was just a chemistry and there was a good flow. And he just got the idea that he would actually name us Diamond and Pearl because the oh. album was called Diamonds and Pearls. So which were you? I was Pearl. Okay. And so one music video became two and three and four. And then we were on the album cover. Wow. And then we toured uh, internationally. So it was, it was a lot of fun. What was he like? He was a really good guy, yeah. a really good guy, very good to us. Um, he just was all about making music, mm. and that's all he wanted to do. And about performance. Like, and uh, everybody performing. I know that saw him live said one of the best, if not the best, live show. He's tremendous day after day after day, and I have to admit that I had never even gone to a concert before I start in his concert. Oh, wow. So that's just what I thought every concert was. <laughs> and then I went to concerts and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess everything's not this extravagant and fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But every night he, you know, because we spent a lot of time together, sure. I just we started to become familiar and kind of friends. And then I would see him do sound check and just sound check, not even the show, just start to perform. And then it was, oh, okay. I forgot yeah. how tremendous he yeah, he is. A very talented. Performer. Yeah. Very talented. Um, then you moved into you show business, uh, the television side of show business. Right. Moved to L.A.? I was already in L.A. Oh, were you there for, for the yes, Prince gig? Yes, but then I just stopped dancing and I started acting. Yeah. So I did all sorts of TV shows and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Again, mm. that was supposed to be one episode and then it turned into two years. Okay, so I read something. I'm, I don't know the show. Yes. So, but I heard that you died. Your character died. Yes. Um, and then they brought you back. Oh, they did. And I didn't really understand what that was going <laughs> to entail, or I would have. Yes. Well, they. I think they had talked about actually making me a vampire. Oh, and okay. I knew enough not to do that because I had become a Christian while I was working on the show. Really? Yes. But well, then, why would you not do that? Because, I mean, it's acting, you're doing a role, it's fiction, it's... Right. For me, I, st yeah, I still don't want to portray things as I was getting stronger as a Christian. Yeah, you felt a conflict. I there. felt a conflict. Hmm. And the further I went, the more I just didn't want to do certain roles. I didn't want to say certain things. I just... Sure. I didn't want to do it. And then as I was growing in God, I started to just really identify that I felt that my real calling was ministry. Yeah. That all the gifts God had given me for expression, for communication, mm -hmm. that were used in entertainment, and it was wonderful when mm -hmm. I did it. It was definitely a time and a season of my life, but then I saw how all those things were knit together really to communicate Him, the gospel, yeah. and to bring people into truth, Good. the ultimate truth. How did you even get saved in the middle of all the dancing and acting? You know, I have a funny story. Um, I was always looking for God. I mean, I, I believed in God, but I was always seeking and searching for truth and deeper things. Mm -hmm. And, and um, living in California, I got into New Age a little bit because that was just sure. popular. Yeah, it's California. It's California. So I did that <laughs> a little. But it just, you know, I, I was still dealing with my counterfeit comforts. I was still smoking and eating and having issues and felt tormented and didn't have peace and a little bit ang anxious and just not doing well. So all the God stuff I was doing 
wasn't affecting me in the way that I was hoping. Mm. So because of that, I was still open. No power in all that. There, there wasn't power. Mm. I didn't find any power. So I was still open. I had some people talking to me about being a Christian. I was like, mm, I don't know, born again Christian. It just I, there were connotations that yeah, came along with it. Sure. You know, I thought I'd be like, praise the Lord, and I'd become <laughs> right. that person. Well, you are now, aren't well, you? Well, now, <laughs> now I'm a total praise the Lord. No, now I'm the Christian I wanted to know before I was a Christian. Oh, okay, good. Because I wanted to kind of see Christianity represented in a way that's not how the media represents Christianity. Oh, yeah, well, sure. Right? Well, that's, so it's had really a, not. It's not, not that at all, but yeah. that's all I really all you knew. knew. I yeah. thought it was either super conservative or kind of hypocritical because that's what was portrayed to me. Sure. I didn't know the essence of it. So how did you find the truth? So uh, I was praying one day. I was in my car. I was driving on the, the freeway, the 405 freeway, and I was like, God, you know I believe in you. I don't get this whole born-again Christian thing. It seems so conservative. It seems so dry. Like, I need passion. I need life. I need something dynamic. So I said, God, you know, if, if the Jesus thing really is real, then just start showing me, like, give me something, like, give me a sign, give me something to help move me in that direction. And if you do, I will investigate. I'll look at the Bible. I'll start to check it out. But you've got to make the first move. Mm -hmm. And what happened? So I'm, I'm literally in my car praying this. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm in that kind of prayer state. And then I look a little more closely to where I am while I'm driving. And I have a pack of Hell's Angels bikers surrounding my car. Uh -huh. Like, you know how they travel in the oh, huge yeah. pack, oh, yeah. yeah. And before I knew it, I was encompassed. So my little car, and then I'm looking around, and I've got, like, the dudes with the leather jackets. And they're and, checking you out. And they, with the, Yeah, they're looking tough. They're, they're the bikers. Right. So I've got ones in front of me, on the side, completely surrounded. So I'm thinking, how ironic. Here I am. I'm talking to God. I'm asking for a sign, and I've got hell's angels all around me. Yeah. So I look a little more closely to the two bikes in front of me, leather jackets. On the back of their leather jackets are big crosses, and over the cross it says, We Ride for Jesus. Wow. I know. I know. And you're like, no way. I, so I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm like, this is the God I'm talking about. Mm. A God who's funny and not uptight and who will talk to yeah. me in a way that will speak to me. Absolutely. So from that point on, it was a series of events. I met a girl in an audition. She started talking to me about Jesus. She took me to her church. It was like this awesome, you know, um, very spirited church that felt right. After months of going, I wound up becoming a Christian. And Can you tell me what church? Yes, it, it's uh, Faithful Central, Kenneth Almer. Oh, yeah. In Inglewood. Yeah, yeah. It was all African American. Yeah, he's and me, great. My little head sticking out. He is wonderful. He's sat right there. Did he? He's a great teacher. Thank you, Kenneth Almer. Your teaching brought me into the kingdom. What year was that? 97. Okay. So mm -hmm. you're not the baby Christian anymore. 99? Oh, my Something goodness. Like I don't that. even know my Christian birthday. Somewhere huh. around there. Yes. It'd be really cool if it was 1999. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think it is, but that, you know what? I should just make it back. It's <laughs> yeah. so good for the story. <laughs> good for the story. So now you uh, you got, is this your first book? This is my first baby book. How was that? Ugh, amazing. I mean, it's a lot. It's a, it's a process. Oh, there's a lot. It's not as easy as you think, right? Oh, my goodness. It's not easy. And this has really been formulating for years and years and years because mm. it's one of the first revelations God gave me when I became a Christian. Which was? Which was, I was seeking him to get free from this food issue. Hmm. You know, I could not get free, even though I was in a great church and uh, things were happening in other areas of my life. I felt like I was growing in God and I was getting some freedom. But the issue with food and eating disorders was getting worse. Hmm. So one day I went to God and I said, please, you've got to help me. What is going on here? And in my spirit, I heard the Holy Spirit say, you have too many counterfeit comforts. And I'd never heard anyone say that, so I knew it was a God thought mm -hmm. because it was completely unfamiliar. And then right away, within another second, I, I put it together that the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter mm -hmm. and that the Lord was showing me that food was a counterfeit to the true Comforter. Mm -hmm. And then he started just talking to me that really my issue wasn't food. It was uh, feelings, things I didn't know how to deal with. Yeah. So he showed me that trying to deal with food, with diets and no carbs and yep. all these things. That's the symptom. Willpower, yes, those were merely mm -hmm. symptoms to a root. Yep. Healthy root, healthy fruit. There you go. Right? So that was the beginning of really this whole journey of him teaching me how moment by moment to when that stuff was coming up, 
to learn how to not run to the counterfeit, but take that time to connect with him, yeah. find out what I'm even feeling, mm -hmm. let God in, connect with those wounds, and then a lot of times he would take me back to, you know, yeah, if you're having an source, issue, often yeah. it's not what's happening in the moment. Yeah. It's just kind of a bruise right. from a past thing. Right. So then the Holy Spirit, you know, he's the counselor. He'll lead us into all truth. And he, you know, because I, I would keep going deeper with God. Holy Spirit, show me. Why, why do I feel like that? Yeah. Well, because this happened. Because this happened in your family. Because that happened. And then when I was able to really encounter God's presence, not just hear about God, right. but encounter Him. And He was showing me things about myself. And then I was feeling Him, like, come into those areas of rejection, like feeling God. Yeah, sure. You know, come into feeling rejected or abandoned and then feeling that, like, that balm or that love or that presence that you can't quite put words to, but you know when you're encountering it. Absolutely. You know when you're in that place and God Almighty is touching you and changing you internally. And then you come out of prayer and you're not all healed up and perfect, you know, like never to have another issue in your life. But I had so many encounters like that where I knew something's different. Yeah. Like a little piece has been filled in. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what Counterfeit Comforts is all about, teaching people how to get into that place with God. Because I'm so grieved when I hear so many believers know about God, hear about God, learn about God, read about God, but they don't personally connect with God. Yep. Yes. Yep. And you did. Wow. And I That's did. That's great. That is so and great. And I do. And I want everyone to because it's really for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's not for ministers only. It's not for anointed TV prophetic people. It's for every single Absolutely. That's Christian. the whole point. That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. To hear him, to feel him, to know him, to experience him. Awesome stuff. What's your website for the book or for whatever you're doing? Rubiaministries.org. Rubiaministries.org. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Facebook and social media and the whole shebang. Yeah, doing it all? Yes, doing it all. Well, good for you. Thank Check you. out Counterfeit Comforts. If that uh, you know struck a chord with you, what you're hearing right there, go get the book right now mm -hmm. and check out our ministry. And uh, I want to tell you, you can hear more from Robia on Life Today on our broadcast program that's available right now at lifetoday.org. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button because we want to let you know about all the great videos from Life Today.